Hello and welcome to a game of Dota 2. You're watching a Star Letter Star series, and we're gonna see six games today. Six games starting off with Navi and ending with Navi as well. First game is gonna be them up against Ahead KZ or Ahead Gaming or Next KZ, however you wanna call them. We won't be having our stats man today, but we will have a co caster. Base Skip, welcome back. Hey Shiver, good to be back. And looking forward to some more Staller action. It's a great tournament and great to be here. Yeah, we're gonna see already a pretty fast draft. I mean, thus far, uh, we already have got, of course, our bans in the first round down with an IO and a bad band out. No surprise there. And Naga 7 OD, also two strong heroes that we see uh, a lot of lately. Chen being removed from the pool to make sure that Navi can't have their strong support. They do again, though. Navi go again for Life Seeder very early on. They they like to do that. They've tended to do that for the last couple of games that we saw from them. And they're just going to continue doing it. So Because why, why not? I mean, they've had a lot of success lately with it. Yeah, Navi have been playing the Life Stealer really well. I think Havos just loves the hero, so no big surprises there. I am a little bit surprised about how much emphasis uh, Next KZ or Head KZ are placing on this Chen. So not only have they picked him up super early, uh, they've also immediately banned out the Enchantress as well. So Enchantress can be a big problem for Chen, but with this much emphasis placed, such an early pick, and you know throwing out some covering bans as well, uh, Chen needs to, I mean, even more than normal, get quite a bit done. Uh, this game, just because of how much they've set him up so far. Yeah, the, I mean, if you want to pick him up as first pick, you kind of have to make it worth it. So I'm expecting a pretty aggressive early game, perhaps, from uh, from ahead. We have an abandoned remove from the pool, which is, of course, a hero that you do not want to face together with a weaver. We've seen that before. We still have a tree and protector in the pool, though. I mean, if they want to go and for that route, they could. Yeah, and a visage as well, indeed. Well, there we have it. It's going to be Kuro's hero, unless... Uh, Unless there's gonna be actually no, Rubik is already banned out. Never mind that. We have a troll still banned out in the end for Navi. I mean, I'm really expecting a support that has a disable still to go together with the Chen. I mean, if you pick it up that early, I mean, as you said, you're laying a lot of emphasis on that. Also, banning out the enchantress for it and stuff. But they have to make hmm. it work. Then they have to yeah. try and uh, and get some early aggression going with him. Get some ganks going. Try to shut perhaps the life stealer down, or otherwise Dendi on his mid. By the way, yesterday. We saw Denny on the Darkseer mid. Okay. So that, that could be a possibility, so we can't necessarily say, like, that's gonna be Phonic Zero right there, and then... Uh, it all depends on what a head picks up for their mid laner. I mean, like yesterday it was a Templar Assassin that he was up against on his uh, Darkseer, so that makes a bit more sense. So far, no real true mid hero picked up just yet, but uh, Ahead Gaming taking into their bonus time right now. Yeah, and I mean, you need to be careful as well. Jowate, you know, recently has been running Lifestealer mid and things like that, and Darkseer and Lifestealer uh, can both quite comfortably take that mid roll if ahead don't, you know, make a bit of a mistake as far as the picks are concerned. Uh, Bane, great pick here. Brain Sap's great, kills birds. Uh, the problem is the familiars might be able to cancel a grip somewhere along the way because they have the Chen. Bane should get good levels, he's very level dependent, does quite well against the Darkseer. Uh, you can obviously nightmare him and keep him, well, waste some of that surge duration. And I think it goes without saying how good he is against snakes. So I think a good pick here from ahead. They might get pressured a little bit, but the nice thing is uh, they can just put the Weaver in their tri lane. And then from there, well, if, if aggression arrives, the Weaver should be absolutely fine. There's two slows on Navi uh, between the Lifestealer and the Visage, and Weaver just doesn't, doesn't really care. So... Ahead, they've got a good opportunity to almost have effectively three solos and then just roam the Bane uh, and the Chen if they really want to. Yeah, I think they're looking very strong. Of course, Bane also setting up for perhaps a Centaur Stump if you want to try and go for a Smoke Gank with them. I like it. I like it a lot. We are going to see a Puck picked up by Nafi. It's a fairly interesting pickup because all the counters for the Puck, and I would say all the counters, I kind of mean uh, mostly... Queen of Pain slash Templar Assassin, they're still in the pool. So ahead, they are going to be able to pick those up if they want to, though we do know that ahead normally favor, or uh, what the fuck, it favors the more tanky mids rather than, than the Templar Assassin, bursty damage, kill, kill, kill kind of mids. It does, he does play very well though, don't get me wrong. We're going to see if they are instantly going to pick up a uh, counter to that puck or if they just know that there is multiple counters still in the pool and Navi can only ban out one, so why not just focus their attention on getting a carry before Navi bans out a carry against them that they wanted to have. I mean, they're still... I say carry because maybe Weaver is going to be on the offlane. It's not necessarily true, of course. Perhaps they want to pick up an offlane hero. But I do like Weaver most in a dual core 
lineup. And if the, your mid laner is indeed not going to be one of those cores that can transition into a late game carry, then you need to have uh, something else. Uh, they do go for Weaver on the safe lane though. Clockwork will be on the off lane here. Picked up by a head, so only the mid laner left for Navi. Uh, for Navi uh, to ban out. For a head. Yeah. Yeah. For a head. Yeah. So, I mean, Navi, this is again a pretty. I guess familiar lineup for them. Uh, the Puck's obviously great against the Weaver. Lincoln get the silence. Uh, he's gonna have a pretty rough time with that. Uh, as far as a header concerned, I I'm actually interested to see that Navi are gonna ban the Templar Assassin here because they have a Dark Seer. Uh, if they were really, really worried about that Puck versus TA matchup, they could, you know, shuffle the lanes around a little bit. They could even have the Dark Seer just running out of the jungle instead, uh, and just throw down a couple of Ion shells and really help out the Puck quite a bit against the Templar Assassin. So. Looks like Navi may be expecting that it is going to end up being a true 1v1 on mid, and that might suggest that they're going to be going for an aggressive try lane. Uh, again, it might not be the best idea, especially given that Lifesteal and Visage don't bring that much killing power against the Weaver, but uh, the TA ban does kind of suggest that they might be going aggressive here. Yeah, and that also they want to just make sure that that's not going to be the hero that Denny is going to face. Enigma last ban out from uh, ahead, as uh, we know that lately Puppy has been playing Enigma. We saw him yesterday. Didn't land the most brilliant black holes, but there were some good ones, and they ended up winning. Uh, which is the most important one. It's it's all the the, the black holes that that nobody like the the PTG black holes are the only black holes that people remember normally. So I guess that's gonna stick there for a while. Navi though, they still have a lot of time left in their bonus time. So one more hero left to be picked up. Uh, we've seen a lot of crystal maidens by them lately, for also for Puppy. And with his other three signatures out of the pool with the Chen Enchantress and the Enigma, we might see a crystal maiden here again. Crystal maiden visage life sealer is actually a very potential uh, dangerous lane, also for the clockwork, even for the clockwork I should say. With uh, slows, d two slows, uh, strong disable, three slows. Sorry, life sealer has one as well as visage and crystal maiden. Three slows and a disable. It's a uh, it's a very scary lane to be up against, and even roaming-wise, Visage and Crystal Main, even though Crystal Main is fairly slow, they could definitely make something happen there, especially if Puck, of course, reaches level 6, has a Dream Coil, might be able to uh, to set something up for the Crystal Main to come in, etc. So I wouldn't be surprised to see her here, but, I mean, there's a lot of support still in the pool, so there's no yeah. real saying what they want to go for. Yeah, I think a support silencer could be a strong option here. I mean, so far in XKZ, you only have the single core uh, of the Weaver. The global silence is fantastic against the Bane because it doesn't matter how well he's positioned in the fight, you should always be able to cancel the grip. Uh, so that's a great way to help out your life stealer. And I mean, not the most popular, and yeah, it is just going to end up being a Crystal Maiden here. But I think there, there might have been an opportunity to, to look at the silencer. Again, the problem is that they just don't really have that much stun. Uh, and Silencer doesn't really help that out. That's true. The only th yeah, the only real disable. That they uh, did you right go now. for the coffee there? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like still sitting here with my the last quarter of my cup of tea. So okay, um, I'll let you drink that and then I'll talk. <laughs> And then, and then we'll then we'll swap. And then we'll and we can swap. Remember yes, I, I'm good. trying to chuck it down before the game begins because I have to have two hands for the for the thing. But I had they need one more hero and they're gonna be up against the puck for that hero, unless they really want to put the clockwork up against the puck. But I wouldn't recommend that. It is gonna be a shadow fiend. And I was saying earlier how I prefer to have Weaver as a dual core hero and how I like to see him with someone else and with someone that or someone mid that can transition into the late game. Well, Shadow Fiend, you hit your hammer on the nail on the head, whatever you say that way. That's gonna be Shadow Fiend right there. And that's gonna be yeah. one that is indeed a very scary one later on in the game. And, well, a lot of pressure for the supports now as well, because the one thing that is scary for Shadow Fiend is that he does not have an escape mechanism. And he is not the uh, the safest mid laner ever. So, the support combination a, for I think Ravi, it's a Weaver mid. Ooh, yeah, I, I think it's a Weaver mid. Oh, what a fuck on the Weaver. Yeah, looks like it might yeah. be, yes. I like that. because We'll, we'll that, find out. Yeah, the, the yeah, phase shift really can good actually not the... the uh, yeah, they cannot the, gem the phase shift cannot stop the full Gemini attack attack. Gemini attack? Yeah, Gemini attack attack. Okay. <laughs> Oh, what a fucker. And he played the Weaver. Let's uh, let's go for who's playing what, as we have, of course, got uh, four people that switch, switched uh, or skipped the draft in the VODs. We have Navi taking on next KZ or ahead KZ or ahead gaming, and they are playing in Star Letter Star Series. We are actually in day 26 today, and we are seeing uh, 
Six games in total. Well, this is game one, so uh, we're gonna see a head on the dire side, Navi on the radiant side, and we are gonna see Stalkat playing his clockwork. He'll be on the offline, no surprise there. It is actually equal. I was finally able to find out who this Chen is, but it is equal, and he's been playing under okay. this Russian uh, name for a while, but it is equal. We'll play the Chen, and he'll uh, look to either go aggressive in the jungle, because, oh, just checking the rune, just checking the rune, because uh, yeah. he only um, has got um, sentries. He places one straight away, look at that, aggression, aggression. Reeves already picked up the invis rune, gonna play the bane, and uh, we are gonna see what a fuck up playing the weaver mid, and on the top lane will be Mantis playing the shadow fiend by himself for now, but he'll be supported at some point. Yeah, and Navi going for the really defensive strats here, we've got Dendi heading towards mid on the puck, we've got Puppy on the Crystal Maiden, Funix is going to be on the Darks here, starting off immediately in the jungle, not risking his life at all on the offlane, we've got Kirky playing the Visage, and that's going to leave for uh, Orhovost playing the Life Stealer. Yeah, and we already had our first uh, Enfeeble in the mid up against Dendi, so maybe helping out what fuck slightly in the start, but Bane has fully rotated top. And as you said, he will be taking on the pooling stacking job, and we should be getting ahead, getting ahead in terms of uh, in terms of levels. And uh, I mean, basically ahead, mostly compared to uh, Navi, although they are doing this thing that they have been doing, that Puppy has been doing. Jung jungling Crystal Maiden actually works out okay. With the Frostbite, you can actually successful jungle, and you only need a couple of clarities before you can pick up some points in the Arcane Aura, and you are going to be able to just uh, clean out creep waves, and therefore get levels, and therefore giving Kuroki, who is also a very level dependent support, of course you want to have that level 6 for those familiars, he's going to be able to pick up all the uh, farm by himself in that small camp, or in the camp uh, that he can pull with. Yeah, and getting the extra levels on the Visage is, is going to be important. Next KZ, they shouldn't have too much trouble finding farm on both the Shadow Fiend uh, and the Weaver mid, and especially with the Shadow Fiend up top, he's already got his Bassy up, so... Uh, for a head, this is looking like a pretty practiced, a pretty practiced strat. They're, they're going to have the Chen come out in a couple of minutes. They'll put some pressure on the tower. Uh, Funix should suspect that this is coming, and he'll probably pick up a relatively early TP. So, um, But it should be early gold for a head, and from there you've got Weaver and Shadow Fiend. If they get a couple of core items up, it can get pretty scary for Navi. So anything that they can do to get as much experience out of this very defensive posture that they started themselves in, uh, is going to be really important because they're just not getting anything out of the anything out of the offlane and they're up against a full jungle chen and somebody in the offlane. Yeah, Clockwork is of course able to uh, to do the whole um, annoying thing, getting the creeps blocked and uh, letting them go only when he chooses to so that he can have the lane next to his tower and he can actually get some uh, some farm out of that one himself and more importantly levels, which is of course what he wants because he can try to get farm with his flare. But levels are, are something indeed that he is getting on a, on a lane. Oh, actually, he's gonna have a big creep wave soon. This is interesting because normally you let your creep wave go at some point, and then you are gonna indeed have a lane equilibrium closer to your tower. But he is even locking even more creeps in there, and that might be. I, I they don't really have the best lineup for that. Like I would say, perhaps they want to have this big ass wave and then you know go push with it, but they don't. They only have really a chance to try and push that. So I'm kind of curious to see what he plans to do with that creep stack. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it's it's cute, but I'm not 100% sure what the, the plan is here. He's got the wagon now, uh, so it looks like he is going to let it go right now, but I think it's just going to bounce straight off the tower. Navi, not the best counter pushers, but I don't think it should be too much of a problem for them here. And it should be okay for Stallcat. The lane equilibrium is going to pogo around like crazy from here, and he should be able to, uh, assuming that he plays it pretty safe, be able to pick himself up some farm. And he's getting pretty close to boots as well, which will definitely help out against this mass slow lineup that <laughs> Navi kind of have right now. Yeah. I mean, right now, at least the Vos is getting for first to last it under his tower. He's already behind on the Shadow Fiend, and quite a lot as well. Of course, that's also because of the uh, creeps that got denied to him by being, uh, you know, by, by Clockwork being annoying, but he's missing last hits as we speak, and that's all due to last hitting on the red tower. It is 19 for 4 here on this life stealer with the Shadow Fiend sitting on 27 to 6, so the difference is uh, quite substantial, and I don't think that all the creeps here will, uh, will put that back in perspective, as Puppy is actually looking at a haste room right now. Whoever picks it up, they might be able to make something happen with uh, with the rotation. Of course, Weaver is not the easiest one to gank, especially not since he's now close to level 6. And, of course, with level 6, he'll have his time lapse. Ooh, look at that harassment. Then be able to uh, send an orb over the head of Wadafaka. Wadafaka sitting on 16 to 1, then he 19 to 5. So, 
that's going to be uh, a fairly even lane, slightly in favor of Dendi, who's now able to force the Weaver out to get his bottle. Yeah. And Manta's putting damage down on the top tower all by himself. He's forcing the rotation from Funic without Riot or requiring the assistance of the Chen. So he's now level 5, he's doing quite well, and tower can end up being picked up anyway, missing the last hit, so... Not perfect, but still great for Manta. He's occupying Funic's time all by himself, and this means that the supports, who are now getting pretty highly leveled, can look to go and do something uh, in the other lanes. Yeah, we have got Chen already sitting at level 5.5, so close to having that Hand of God. We have got a Bane sitting at level four and a half, who has basically not taken any experience away from Mantis in that offlane. Mantis sitting at level six, same level as uh, Havo, slightly ahead actually. I keep feeling awkward when saying that ahead is actually ahead, but oh well. It is uh, the way it is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Reeves now has boots and has a nightmare, he's got a brain sap. I think he might be looking for some action. We already know that that Chen has got a, uh, a smoke in his inventory and the courier is now bringing some next uh, items towards him. Let's see what he's getting. He's getting boots. More people are getting boots. Boots and starting for a mechanism. So that could indeed be, with those boots, the start of a gank for uh, for a head going mid, perhaps to take down Dendi. Dendi who is scouting out for a rune. Let's see if he's gonna get lucky. Well, it is gonna be Reeves with an illusion rune that uh, takes it. Ooh, time. Oh, silence is there. The timeless was already used. Dendi jumping towards the high ground. He comes a frostbite and a Nova. That's gonna be your first blood right there. What a fuck, I really nice to play by Dendi. Uh, yeah, they, like, what a fuck got a bit yeah. overconfident, thinking that his supports were closer, perhaps, than they were, and not anticipating Puppy to be there. Yeah, and it's really good for Dendi, especially since Avost has kind of shifted a little bit of the, a little bit of the mid-game onto Dendi's shoulders now by picking up this Midas. It's obviously great against the Chen Creeps and uh, all that kind of thing, but it does mean that Havos is a little bit more interested in farming uh, than participating in these early fights. And I think Navi have to be a little bit worried because ahead, they've got the duo core lineup, they've got the good Chen push, which is already sort of finding its feet. Uh, the mech shouldn't be too far away, and they've got reasonable pickoff as well in the clockwork. Stalkat's not doing the best. Uh, but he's now reached level 4, so he's not too far behind, and if towers continue to fall, the, the fact that he hasn't got that much farm to start things off uh, shouldn't really matter too much. So, Navi, I'm a little bit surprised that Havost is going straight for this Midas, because I'm not sure if, it necessarily, if they're necessarily favored for the late game. Obviously, Darks here will have a big impact, and um, you know, getting a Shadow Fiend Illusion or something like that is absolutely great, but I don't feel that they can sit back. They do need to... No, they definitely need to take a couple of successful team fights uh, when next Kizzy come pushing. Yeah, they do have a pretty good teamfight lineup as well. I mean, you have got indeed the Darks here that you mentioned with the puck there that uh, just screams control with his global silence, not global silence, AoE silence, and the Dream Coil, of course, as well. Infest out, perhaps, once uh, Dendi gets himself a Blink Dagger. I mean, there's a lot of teamfight. I'm even, I'm, I will even say Freezing Field because I know Puppy will find a way to work that into uh, do a triple kill or something <laughs> like that. But it's uh, it's definitely teamfight for Navi that, that they can do. Next KZ, not completely hopeless, of course, they've got themselves a Hand of God to make sure that the uh, main damage is already uh, negated. In this room, picked up by the Chen, and he did see that though, so won't be a gank, just some harassment being uh, thrown at him. Uh, but yeah, they have also yeah. got a Wrecking of Souls, so Mantis also, of course, playing a role in the team fight. Especially if he gets some more items, and, and Mantis still doing really well. He is highest farmed hero on the map, highest in last hits, highest on net worth, sitting on 4.2k gold. Uh, shadowed by uh, Havost, who's sitting on 3.7, so he's not that far off, and he will, of course, at some point get uh, get ahead of that Shadow Fiend because of his Hand of Midas. But his Hand of Midas right now, it's, it's net worth gold sitting in his inventory, right? I mean, that's that's like a part of his uh, his net worth right there, and it only gives tech speed, so it's not actually as valuable as you might think. So, we're gonna see if, uh, if Havost can farm fast enough. That's basically what it is. Either they are trying to run against a clock, or oh, they're running against a clock, all right. Open wounds are there. Familiar disables, is it enough? Nightmare comes in, infest to a creep. That's gonna be inside a Chen creep. He infests out, and he actually tries to run for it. Equal. I actually thought perhaps he could send his creep towards the base. In the meantime, Visage still goes down. We still have... Oh, Hannah Midas on a Chen creep. That's painful. In comes the open wounds, up on equal, they're trying to dodge it, it's not enough for Havos to actually be able to get a kill, but a dream curl, that might just be doing the job, hand of god coming out, clockwork still able to pick himself up, another kill, as we have Chen and Bane finally dying. In the end, it's a two for two trade, we're following the <laughs> we're following the kills that uh, Navi actually got, but next KZ did get themselves a kill, 
Uh, two kills actually as well on the two supports. In comes a hookshot. Actually, Stalkat not entirely done. Gets himself level six. Battery assault here as well. We do have a rage steal coming off from Vos, who's now chasing out Stalkat together with Dendi, who orbed himself in. Selkat should be able to get himself out. Dendi's still looking good on mana, though perhaps he wants to continue chasing this. Has got another orb again in just a couple of seconds. And hello, puppy. Welcome back from the dead. And the orb misses. Couple of last hits. That's the waning rift. That was all it took. Dendi able to TP himself out. Takes a lot of harassment before he uh, does get himself out. But back in base, that doesn't really matter. In the end, Navi is the one to get ahead. Considering that the clockwork uh, died there still next to their two supports. Yeah, and I was a little bit surprised that Navi were going for that push. They're not the best at pushing into a tower, and it was looking pretty good once next KZ had all those heroes sitting behind it, but the fight gets a little bit split up. Stalkat honestly ends up throwing away his life a little bit, maybe not checking the lifestealer's mana before jumping in there, uh, and ends up losing his life off the first hook shot of the game. But next KZ, they managed to hold. They've still got those core items coming along nicely. Uh, that is going to slow down the mech a little bit, and... Navi, I think, pretty happy with those trades. Uh, you brought up a point about Dendi looking pretty good on mana, and I'd like to just draw attention to the fact that Puppy is maxing out his Arcane Aura at the moment, so I, I think that might be just trying to help out Dendi a little bit in the 1v1 mid uh, against the Weaver. Again, with this very defensive posture that they've gone for, he's the only hero that's really exposed on the map, so helping him out in any way that, any way that they can. Uh, it's definitely big. I would maybe prefer to see some more points up in the bite since it's their only real lockdown against the against the Weaver, barring the, the silence on the puck, but it seems to be working out pretty well for Dendi and he's getting good farm, just being able to spam nonstop. Yeah, I fully agree. I mean, that aura has got a big impact for, uh, for Dendi and co, but yeah, we'll see how much that Frostbite will come into play later on, and of course he will level it at some point, I guess. As he is uh, still jungling a bit. He is level 6. He picked up Freezing Field at level 6. Interesting point to note. So, you know, you would expect the Crystal Main to then also aim to use it. That's the reason why I pick it up. Oh, we've got a Smoke Gank. They find Funic. In comes a Net from the Troll. Brain up there as well, but in comes a Dark Sea Wolf. He's still there from Reeves though, and that should be a pick off. Funic goes down. In comes Dandy. Reeves will be sent home, and that will make equal the last one alive there. But in comes Mantis. He's gonna try to help out. Dandy, one hit away from dying, will end up getting picked up. Now Navi comes in. Now Vos comes, comes in. It's too late though, or at least too late for Dandy. Vos runs himself away. Might be enough. Ooh, Hookshot barely misses. Well, they didn't really miss. Just didn't reach enough. What the fuck? I'm still chasing down this uh, life stealer. He doesn't have an arm. Can't arm the toggle. Just tries to rage. He's gonna probably try to deny himself to a tower or to a uh, to a creep. But he can't even do that. He will just die. He'll just go down. Three dead on the side of Navi. Well, next KZ did not have a single casualty there, and with this, they can actually continue pushing with their gen creeps because the only one that was sent back to base was the Bane, who was already back in the middle. Yeah, and that's that's a huge number of pickups for ahead there. I think that's the BKB finished on the Shadowfin, the mechs up in well, up in a second for the Chen, and the really nice thing that they can do here is yeah, just put the send back on the Shadowfin. He can stand there, get a few more hits in, and and back he goes. So ahead playing it pretty well. They've got those core items now up, and Navi not quite the blink on Dendi just yet. A again, there's quite a bit of weight on his shoulders this game to get things done, to hold off the pushes, because Havos still has his hand of Midas. He's got his drum now, uh, so he will be able to participate a little bit. We might see some infest ganks going on, but a lot of this relies on Dendi getting this blink dagger in. Uh, as well, these points in the Arcane Ore are to help Dendi get as much farm as he possibly can uh, to get that up, so... Needs to be... I guess needs to live up to the expectations that Puppy's kind of put on him here. Yeah, and but he has... There we go, he's yeah, got his blank. With the tower that he, that he just got, then uh, he gets enough gold. They will lose the tower on the bottom lane. Mantis, what a fuck, uh, Reeves hanging around there to uh, to secure that one. And of course, the tier 2 tower that they just started on, it's almost down. So next push, the next case he has, I'm doubting that Navi can get there in time to actually deny it. As uh, we do have a bit of a push from Funic on the top tier 1 tower, there's gonna be some uh, help for him as well as uh, even a Vost moves top. As well as Dendi and uh, Kuroki with only Crystal Maiden sitting there to defend the tier 2 bottom. Good luck then, uh, good luck puppy. But uh, that should be a tier 1 top going down as well. Will mean that the tier 1s will be even if they take it down and if a head does not take the tier 2 bottom down. Which is now indeed the case. However, I mean a head is pushing on all fronts. They're pushing mid, they're pushing bottom. And the only way they're not actually pushing is, uh, is top as puppy might have just overextended his boundaries. What a fucker goes for him, there will be a frostbite. 
And that's enough. That's enough to stop motherfucker from chasing. Not enough to defend this tower though, I mean, the tower will die. The last hit taken by Mantis, who has got his BKB ready in the meantime. Oh, what? Why did Puppy- He actually went in still. Holy cow, time yeah, what if, himself what, what is if, out. Yeah, yeah, he went, he went in all, all in, and Puppy, the only thing that he could do is drop the freezing field, and it, it didn't really deter Wadafaka, so. And the unfortunate thing is that Dendi had just TP'd mid with Havost in tow. Uh, a really nice cog from Stallcat actually bounced uh, Dendi twice right as he landed. Uh, so he wasn't able to blink forward, get the kill on the clockwork, and yeah, Navi end up losing one and the tower on bot as well. So next KZ picking up a lot of momentum, a little bit ahead in terms of gold, a little bit ahead in terms of experience as well, and yeah, Navi, they've spent a lot of time with Havost, yeah, just sitting inside Dendi here. So it looks like they're gonna give up on this first, this first blink dagger gank, and next KZ get to back off. Uh, looks like almost Getting pretty close to the BKB on the Weaver, uh, and from there just group up for another push. So things are looking very promising for ahead, but can't count Navi. No, can't count Navi. Yep, they've got great team fight. Uh, and to end this thought, I'd like to point out that Kuro has a spare buckler. <laughs> uh, I think it's it's a pretty cost efficient item by itself. The bonus armor for his team is going to be great, uh, especially against the presence of the Dark Lord, which is already getting leveled up. So. Could have been a miscommunication. I, I doubt it. I think Kuro just wants the casual buckler for a little bit of extra armor uh, for the team. Well, it's, it's nice, I guess. <laughs> it's a it's, little it's, bit It's extra. pretty good. It scales yeah. well. Oh, look at that. Clockwork. Oh, nice dream call. Then he jumps himself in. Winning rift up on two. Dream call up on three. Is it going to be enough, though? In comes a Vos. Soul Sumption gets dodged. That nightmare from Reeves turns around for a freeze grip up on a Vos. It's going to be enough. He does end up going down, though. But Mantis, he is just able to kill off everybody that he sees right now. Dominating what a fuck as he also gets a kill. Denny and a Vos. Last one's alive. Now Denny tries to jump himself out. <laughs> jumps himself towards the other side of the tower. Phonic, oh, you're still in this. Wants to go for Mantis. Gets him, but goes down with the ship. That's going to be a... 3-4-4 four, four exchange with favors next KZ by far because of course most of those kills were taken by uh, Shadow Fiend and um, I mean he is getting pretty big. The only one that he died for was uh, was just now was Phonic. That was a pretty big fight for next KZ. Yeah, really nice fight for next KZ. Dendi makes the best of a bad situation and does actually manage to get the deny uh, on the tower after all of his teammates had died. So. Uh, That's actually nice. Props to him. Yep. Yeah, really, really nicely done by Dendi. But I think Navi have to be a little bit worried. Does Havost have his armlet finished? He's getting pretty close. So the Midas hasn't slowed him down too much. But uh, again, I think they have to be a little bit worried if this game starts to go late. The Shadow Fiend flash farms amazingly. The Weaver can split push and apply some pressure. And again, Navi's lineup isn't really that well equipped to deal with the Weaver, uh, at least until they get a hex up on Dendi. Uh, or up on Darkseid. Of course, they can load up the Infest Bomb and you know go for the Silence. But as soon as as soon as Weaver has that BKB, they've got very little uh, to deal with him here. Yeah, and he is uh, he is indeed going for that BKB because I mean Weaver knows that there's only two real disables that he can stop himself from, uh, or three maybe that he can stop himself from uh, from getting shot down with, which is the Hex, which is not yet there. So preemptively having the BKB, he has it ready now. The Frostbite. And the familiar disables, and that's not going to be any issue whatsoever once he has that BKB. So it's going to be really scary for Navi the next fight. One thing that I didn't actually mention at all, which I, which I normally do, so shame on me. But the importance of this fight for Star Letter Star Series. So next KZ, they're actually not going to Kiev most likely, and they're also not going to get dropped out. They're looking just solid. Uh, same team as they've always been in Star Series, just a r mediocre in the in the rankings. That is, they are listed as number eight right now of the sixteen. So a nice uh, comfy in the middle. Navi, they are listed at number one, but they have got three losses. And dropping down to four losses might actually put them in fifth location, depending on what Quantic does. If they lose this game, and they have got a bit of leeway now that a Quantic lost the game uh, yesterday. And also because Quantic still has to face up against Rattlesnake, which is definitely not going to be an easy contest for them. But they, like, N Navi, it's not really, like, they can't really lose, I think. I mean, they can. And, but then they also put their hands, their lives, their chances for Star Letter Kiev in the hands of someone else. And I don't think that's where you want to be. So, pretty big match for them uh, to, to still take, as they only have two more games in Star Series. Both of which are played today, of course, uh, one right now and the other one later today up against Ubals. Also interesting to note is that those two games actually were planned on Saturday first. But since Navi is uh, once again playing in Tech Labs, 
um, NextKZ and Ubos actually used their wild cards for Navi because Navi was out of wild cards, and uh, because of course their opponents were able to use their wild cards for Navi, they were able to still play. Otherwise, they would have been disqualified from Star Series, and you know that's uh, something that NextKZ and Ubos were able to uh, prevent. So kudos to Sportmanship right there. Yeah, I feel like we've had a lot of examples of that in in Star Ladder with with teams bailing one another out. Um, when it comes to, to rescheduling matches. So, really nice to see. The sports inscription is great. The, or the organization of this tournament, again, I, I talked about it yesterday. The lobbies are always up on time. The games start on time. The teams are there. You know, they know the rules. It's, it's a really enjoyable tournament. And it's good to see that the players enjoy it. The organizers are hopefully enjoying it, not having to herd cats too much. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, it's just overall seems, seems pretty good. And, yeah, of course, shout-outs to... Shout out to sport, sportsmanship. Uh, we've had the game slow down a little bit here. Uh, again, I don't think ahead are too worried about this. They are getting a little bit of split pushing done. They've got the BKB on the Weaver, uh, and Shadow Fiend is still just flash farming away. He's got his Manta style already finished, so things looking great for him. He's the lead farmer on the map, and Navi, they're getting what they can, but they are slowly falling further and further behind. Yeah, and we actually have a smoke up for next KZ. They go with Stalkat, Reeves, and uh, Equal. Looking for a pick off, looking for someone as the Manta style is up on Mantis. Let's see if they can find someone. We see a drawing on the minimap. And perhaps want to try and uh, find themselves a uh, Havos, which is, of course, the most important target here next to Dendi. One of the two would be nice. We do have Funic now also with the Blink Dagger, so more initiations are possible. Reeves, walking up the high ground here, finds himself a Crystal Maiden. Uh, can't put him into a Nightmare, because get front bitten first. Of course, Frostbite is overall the. Uh, in the most instant cast that you can have here in this game. No real attack animation or anything like that or cast point as uh, there's a lot of people sitting on the high ground. Navi, they're thinking about perhaps jumping in here. We do have uh, the BKB on, so it's not going to be the easiest kills. In come some raises. Mechanism already popped. Creeps along for some vision on the high ground, realizing that there are indeed three people there. What a fucker, thinking about maybe doing something? No, they back off. They just go for the tower. They want to go for the push and hope for for Navi to maybe overextend or maybe try to initiate a team fight again. And ahead, of course, coming out with their items and getting uh, getting the better out of that team fight, which probably would be the case. And that's that's why Navi just doesn't jump in. They're letting, they're letting the tower go. Was the last outer tower on the side of Navi? And uh, deny, deny. So that's two towers a night right now. As uh, Vos was able to uh, to get that one in. Uh, deny on the top tier too, actually. That was a different yeah. deny. The mid one was still taken. Yeah, and I mean, Navi's positioning was a little bit weird there. I mean, they had Funic down on the low ground. Uh, the rest of them were all over to the west. And fighting over on these stairs, it's it's not the best choice because Stalkat can just walk in. He can completely block you off with the cogs, and then split the team fight up into two and. Next case, D, I think they'd be pretty happy with that. They had great positioning on the tower. Uh, and yeah, Navi just looking to buy as much time as they possibly can, but they're running out of options. There's uh, still the Aegis up on the Shadow Fiend. There's no towers left to take. It's pretty straightforward for a head here. They just farm up any items that, they, that they're that they pretty close to, and from there look to make their way up onto the high ground. And uh, looks like Equal's actually pretty farmed on this Chen. He's <laughs> actually managed to snag himself an ultimate orb, so. Uh, I guess Chen Hex on the way here. I think so too. It's uh, it, it's saying something. I mean, they know that right now Navi can fight them, so they know this game is gonna go on for a while. And I mean, that's so much added value because it's not something that you normally have. It's uh, it adds a lot to uh, to what Next KZ can do, and of course, it forces maybe Dendi to at some point go for a uh, BKB as Lifesteal just finds himself what a fuck, what a fuck. I'm not able to get himself away. He did use his BKB. Tier one tower goes down with uh, with the Weaver as well. Bit of a good pickup there for Navi, using Dream Coil, everything else. No time lapse though, though, silence preventing that from happening, most likely. As we have yeah, And the pickup's pretty big. Basher being uh, yeah. bought, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's a big pickup because that's a minute, it was, it was a minute left on the Aegis, but 30 seconds on the Weaver, so there's no chance for an XKZ to really be able to get anything done uh, with this Aegis here. And Navi, well, looking to apply a little bit of split pressure, we've got Funic. Hiding with his Blink Dagger all the way up in the top lane. I'm, I'm not sure what the plan is here. I think he's just hoping to keep Next KZ away as long as he possibly can for Havos to finish up this Basher. But well, hit by Navi, they're going to wait out the Aegis and gets them back on the slightly more even footing. 
Yeah, I mean, despite that there is a three tower difference, the gold graph is still sitting at only 1k in favor of next KZ, which is really not that much. And especially not if you're gonna assume that at some point. No, duh. Just too late. They were on par with finding Funnick, but the hookshot uh, was a bit too late. TP already out for Funnick. But yeah, if, you, if you're thinking that Navi at some point will take those towers down, because they got actually okay-ish split push, I guess, in a way, if uh, Dendi keeps doing the thing that he is doing as well, because he's actually pushing right now and split pushing and farming on the lane, because he can't actually try to find any pickoffs by himself. So Navi will, in the end, get ahead in terms of gold if they manage to hold on to, uh, to whatever they have right now, and, and of course get those towers at some point as well. Experience graph is actually in favor of Navi, because the later pickoffs pick off, I should say, singular, has been done by Navi and those give more experience than earlier kills, which were done by NextKZ, of course. We do have an 8-10 to 10 score, very even game thus far. I still would put it slightly in favor of NextKZ because they have a dual core and they're up against a solo core, but if Navi can find those uh, those pickoffs, as those important pickoffs on a Weaver or on the Shadow Fiend, then they definitely have uh, a good chance of still uh, getting ahead in this game and taking the game for themselves. Yeah, and just... I mean, talking about NextKZ being a little bit ahead, just looking at the net worth uh, up on Mantis at the moment, he's heading towards a butterfly. Havos not really able to keep up in the arms race. He has finished up the Skull Basher, so doing pretty well, and the Midas is now paying for itself. But it's not too difficult to imagine a situation where Navi, if, if things had gone a little bit differently along the way, um, you know, NextKZ could now be breaching high ground. So I think it's. Not a stroke of good luck for Navi that, you know, next KZ ended up taking all of the other towers right around the time that Havost is really coming into his element. But if Dendi had had a slightly worse game here, um, next KZ could be walking all over them. So I think props to Dendi. Again, I said a little bit earlier in the game that Puppy, I guess, put pretty high expectations on him with all those points in Arcane Aura. But uh, it does look like it's really paid off here. And he's also heading towards a Hex. It's definitely going to be important, especially since, yeah, Havos probably won't have an MKB for a while, uh, and Shadowfiend's getting very close to this butterfly. Yep, sitting at 1500 gold already, he's uh, farming uh, quite fast indeed, and, I mean, why not, right? I mean, he has got all the confidence in the world that he can escape when he actually uh, is in some trouble. Maybe right now he might be reconsidering, considering then he has got a uh, side of vice, but he hasn't shown it just yet. Yeah. Because of his side of vice, perhaps we're gonna see Denny trying to to go for a gank, have an infested life serum, and just trying to pick someone off. Uh, Mantis walking up the high ground, even after seeing Denny, I think he. Well, we maybe didn't see it actually. But this is just how confident Mantis is right now in this game. He is farming Navi's ancients by himself, nobody around him, no vision on the map on that side of the. Uh, on that set of the Ancients at all. I mean, they have got a ward close towards the mid lane, which they used, of course, when they started to pressure down mid a bit earlier, but... Yeah, other than that, he is just really confident. This map is his, and he uh, he walks like he owns the place, and this time he actually means it. Yeah. And Navi, I think you have to be a little bit concerned for their late-game prospects. If the Bane manages to get up a BKB, I mean, he's, he's ages away right now. Um, but if the Bane manages to get a BKB up, I don't feel that it matters how much farm the Lifestealer has. He's going to be locked down. Uh, if Navi can sow enough chaos in the team fight to you know, be able to get him out of that grip and keep on fighting, then that's great. But I don't know if the ultra late game necessarily favors them here. So they finally grouped up. They've stopped farming on the map. They've got a bunch of heroes smoked behind to Vost, and Roshan's just about to respawn. So uh, a pickoff here could be absolutely crucial. And not that many heroes with buyback available. So this pickoff or this next fight could decide uh, the next six minutes or the next ten minutes of the game. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, the question is, does the head take this bait? Because that's basically what it is. We have got life students having uh, being bait. In comes the hookshot. It does get Vos. Open wounds already up on Salkut. In comes Phonic and Denny though. Vacuum into the wall. BKB turned on. Phonic already dropped. Fiend's gripped as well. Familiar's trying to do what they can, and it's actually what a fucker that tries to get Kuroki here on the back end. Gets Hex up though, and gets killed off for it as well. Double kill for Dendi in the end. It is gonna be a head that's still alive for three, and actually buyback on the <laughs> on the uh, Weaver. We'll be back here in a moment. Triple kill for Dendi. Not sure if he's gonna be making it out of this one though. So gets stunned up, killed off. Four heroes dead on the side of Navi. The buyback making all the difference in the world. And just Mantis being able to live through all of this, have got his butterfly for that fight, of course, as well. The hand of God made a difference, the mechanism was there for next KZ, and they just got everything uh, going for them, apart from maybe what a fucker diving as far as he did. But that was a fight, again, taken by next KZ. They 
don't really get a Roshan off the back of it though. I mean, even a Vos says, you know, this territory is mine. He's sitting in the Rosh pit just in case. But next case, they don't, don't feel comfortable enough to go for Roshan right now. Yeah, and now they got a. They split up a little bit weirdly in, in that fight. Havost actually was pretty much halfway down the lane, you know, towards where his tier one tower would have been, uh, while Dendi was still was still fighting and it just jumped back in aggressively. So, looks like Navi maybe a little bit of, you know, disagreement as to whether or not they were going to continue that fight, and they end up paying pretty heavily for it. Stalkat Stalk might get caught here. Yep. So assumption comes out. Gets healed up slowly, doesn't matter though. Roshan already dead in the meantime. Mance is picking up the Aegis. Finds himself a familiar to take down, which is always nice. Kuroki only having one left, and he did just resummon them, so that's quite a sad ordeal right there. Nightmare upon a upon Havos. Almost wanted to call him S4. Because of his name. Now either, they're not backing off. Roshan or not. They want to try and make something happen, perhaps. Try and get a pickup with their blink daggers, with their hexes. I just want to still point out, by the way, that that freezing field that Puppy threw out was still pretty impressive during the fight. He did, of course, go down in the midst of it. And comes the Infest out, vacuum wall! Mantis, already hexed up, taking a lot of damage. Has, of course, got the Aegis, but will be forced to use it before he can wreck him of souls. Motherfucker turning on his BKB, already used his time lapse. Well, now look for people as Navi. They got what they came for, they got the Aegis, and they backed themselves out of the fight. And as I say that, still a visage on the wrong side of the field, taken off by Mantis. Maybe they can find some more. There's a hook shot. He finds it. He finds Fonic. Gets him stuck in cogs as well. The vacuum's still there, but it doesn't matter. Clockwork gets a kill. Rackium of Souls doesn't hit up on Avos because he already was raging. He goes now for Wadafaku who gets frostbitten, and Avos will get hexed up and dies as well. Puppy again with its Ghost Scepter. A freezing field almost gets the entire duration up, but it doesn't matter. Double kill for Mantis. That's gonna be another fight taken by next KZ. And that was also the Scythe of Ice ready on the chan in case people were wondering where that Hex Hero came from all of a sudden. That's the Scythe of Ice chan right there. Bye back from a Vost. And Dendi's got buyback available as does Funic. Ultimates are down for 20 seconds on the puck and 30 seconds on the Dark Series, here, so we might not see it, but looks like NSKZ just, well, playing it kind of safe. They are still moving down here. They don't have the Weaver at the moment. Uh, the Chen Hex is obviously up, and was only just barely up in yeah. that fight. Uh, equal, actually, I think he sold something, and he w ended up at 865, and he sat there waiting for the rest of the passive gold. Oh, and that's good job, Reeves. Denying himself. Why was he still there? Awkward. I'm I'm not sure why he was there, but the suicide deny is uh, the nightmare deny is definitely impressive. But yeah, I'm I'm not sure what he was up to. I think he was. Maybe trying to do a little bit of warding. Yeah, Kuro suspects, well, why was he there? Maybe he's placing a ward on our high ground. Uh, checks for it, but there's, there isn't actually anything there. I think he was on the, on the way and ended up being picked off. So next KZ, a little, little bit of a mistake from them there. Uh, it's still a pretty cl close game. Navi, I'm not sure why they took that team fight on mid. I mean, it was into the Aegis. I think next KZ had Stalkat dead for a few seconds at the start of that fight. But yeah. And Navi just pressuring now. They want to keep Next KZ away from their side of the map. They still got, they still have one last line of defense in the buyback. So even if one of these fights outside the base goes badly, uh, they've got something to fall back on. But yeah, Navi going to continue pressuring here. Yeah, and actually at the moment nobody has got buyback on the side of anybody because everybody oh, has actually, gold. Actually, yeah, <laughs> nobody, nobody's got a buyback. Yeah, we do. I mean, the one thing that I want to point out is that this Chen is so farmed that he's actually higher farmed than the, than the Weaver. And we talked about the dual core from next to KZ. Doesn't really make that much of a difference when Weaver is not as farmed as he maybe should be, considering he was a solo mid. He doesn't have his Desolator ready just yet, which I'm assuming he wants to have, as uh, Dundee might be thinking about jumping in here. They still want to try and take a fight. We still want to try and make it happen, but everything is up again for next KZ. There's 36 souls still on Mantis, and he has got a new item in the Deadless. It comes a vacuum for a step forward. That's going to be out of God already used. Funic, but we drop first. Chen stuck in position, taken down by Havos, who's now trying to run for his life. We'll be able to do just that as we still have, uh, well, a one for one trade in the end. Just Funic going down for the Darkseer. I still think that that's not the kind of fight. Oh, never mind. That's going to be Visage dying again as well on the wrong side of the fight once again. Goes a different direction on Dennis' team. Of course he tries to get the attention away from the rest of his team, so it makes kind of sense, but it's still kind of risky actually. They might be finding someone else, they might be finding Poppy. Uh, if they had a ward here, <laughs> they would have had it. 
But of course that ward would have encountered anyway. So uh, still again a fight taken by Next KZ. They did of course use their BKB charges for it, but it's it's interesting that Navi keeps forcing out these fights that they are not winning. They haven't won one of those fights. They've been ch trading kills, fine, but they have not won a fight yet. Yeah, and Navi, they were looking for the perfect initiation there, but really nice four staff play from Stalkat. Managed to slide Mantis back past the tier 2 tower into safety away from where he could be locked down. And yeah, Navi ended up having to scatter. I, I think the plan right now for Navi is just deal with the Shadow Fiend as quickly as they can. So jump in with the Life Stealer, drop the Abyssal Blade, drop the Hex, uh, burst him down while he doesn't have evasion up, and then hopefully take the rest of the fight from there. But. The safe lane sh no, farming Shadow Fiend is just not slowing down. He's got his Daedalus up as well. Uh, and Navi, they haven't really been spending that much time farming. Like we've said, they've just been respawning mid, respawning yeah. mid. They're keeping the fight away from their base, but um, next KZ is slowly getting those items up. And like you said, Equal is, is crazy farmed on this gen. I uh, think he's now making his way towards an Ags. Yeah, I mean, if Navi keeps forcing out these fights, he needs his Hand of God up in every possible timing he can. And if they are indeed going to go for Shadow Fiend over and over again as first target, that Hand of God is, is going to be needed for Mantis, because he is still their main damage dealer. Hand of God mechanism, he has to be around there. We already saw Stalcat using the Forest Staff to keep him a bit more in safety in uh, the previous fight, which definitely helped out. I wouldn't be surprised if we see, for example, Bane also going for uh, Forest Staff. Actually, what did he pick up? No, nothing. Reeves is kind of poor. Reeves is the poorest hero on the map. He's got an urn, he's got uh, himself some uh, arcane boots and a magic stick. That's it. Oh, and a TP scoring award. <laughs> but he is, uh, he is kind of poor. Puppy, in the meantime, is uh, placing some aggressive wards, indicating that they still want to go for it. Look at their warding, by the way. On the lane, on the high ground, and uh, one uh, the other one on the lane as well. They really want to continue going for this mid tier 2 tower, trying to maybe, like, if they win one fight, I'm not even sure if it's enough to break the base. But that's what they seemingly want to do. Win that one fight, break the base, win the game. It's starting to get tougher and tougher though, and as you say, I mean, previous fight there might not have been buybacks, but I think that's not gonna happen again as, uh... Next KZ does the same thing as Navi did earlier on. Smoking up behind one of their uh, cores, it's what a fucker that they wanna smoke up behind on. They will trade though. Or perhaps, if Navi doesn't uh, turn back, they'll trade a tier 2 for tier 3, which is a good trade for Next KZ for sure. Yeah, Navi fortification already used, and now the TP's come in, but they're very defensive and ahead of almost. They've already taken the high ground. They're gonna play it safe, but Navi really living on the edge there. They don't even manage to end up getting the tower, so everybody's now here. Uh, Navi in position, but it does cost them quite a bit. Yeah, oh, hex up on the gem. First off, into safety. The fortification indeed already used, so next time that ahead goes high ground. I mean, what a fucker with his Desolator can actually pull out quite a bit of damage on that tower. And Mantis style illusions for Mantis definitely should not be underestimated either. And it's pretty scary to just lose a tower without giving a fight for it. And look at that, from the low ground even. Doesn't matter if he misses a couple. That's a tower already dead. Frostbite still what a fucker, but it doesn't matter. Gets a mech charge to uh, getting up to par. There goes your... Oh, Mantis style! That's already funny death though! Who cares about a Mantis style? Who cares about a Dark Seer wall? In comes the Infest out. Trying to make something happen. Hex up on uh, on Havos. And Crystal Maiden already down. And Fiend's Grip there. Havos will get picked off. Sal got still alive in this one. Here comes your hand of God. Hook shot in upon Kuro. Who's got forced back into base. Havos, he bought back. Wants to go for Sal Gets him in the end. Shadow Fiend hexed up. Still alive for now. Has not got his BKB anymore. Does get stunned up by Familiars as well. And Abyssal now as well. It's a soul assumption. He might actually drop here. But the butterfly makes such a big difference. Havos is actually missing quite a bit of hits. And he goes down beyond godlike. That's gonna be a buy bot bag life stealer who ends up going down again. In the meantime, Denny tries to come in to finish the job, but he can't do it. Gets forced outside of his base. Rex go down one after the other, and now rotating onto the mid lane to try and take down the tier three GG. mid as well. The GG comes out. Navi lose a game up against the head gaming or next KZ. Very strong showing with them from them. What do you think? Outplayed, outdrafted? Which one was it? I think they got caught off a little bit by the last pick, Shadow Fiends. I think, you know, that they played it defensively the whole way through, but next KZ had the duo core running the whole time, and yeah, that, that last pick, Shadow Fiend, did work. 11 for 1 for 9 at the at the end of the day for Mantis. So, I don't know, Navi just didn't quite seem to be able to get the co coordination at the end there, and I mean, Fonik, he's got a Blink Dagger, but for that last fight, he just walked in, dropped the wall, nobody backed him up. He got Yeah, he got crit twice in the face, and he just died, so that was... 
and that was it. It looked like Navi, they were trying for the, you know, the cuter plays on mid, and I, I think, you know, the riskier plays where they were trying to jump the Puck and the Darkseer in at the exact same time and out pops Lifestealer and get that really, really, really tight coordination. And at the end, looks like Funic could just... I don't know what the plan was there, just walking straight in, and yeah, Navi can end up losing. So that they're not necessarily in jeopardy, are they, for their they're, their spot for the land finals? But it's a little bit more difficult now. Yes, because right now, mm -hmm. even though they're still sitting very high because they've just played more games than, than for example, Quantic Alliance and KP has. Uh, but they like I'm looking at the losses only at the moment because four losses is actually the same amount as the fifth place right now. And Quantic, even though they still have to face up against Rattlesnake, which is not going to be an easy game for them, you're going to bet your ass that they are going to be coming prepared for that one. And it's uh, it's going to be that game that will also decide Navi's fate, I think. So, of course, still a, a bit of games to be played, but Navi, uh, well, not looking, uh, no, not not guaranteed in. I think that with if they won this, if they won today, all their both of their matches, they would have been guaranteed to go to Kiev. But right now, not so guaranteed anymore. They are only having to face Ubolst, which is the last uh, team in the rankings, and the last team today that we're going to see as well. Uh, so it's in theory going to be a win for them. I say in theory because, you know, as we know, rankings don't really mean that much in best out of ones. If they win that one, it's still not going to be out of the woods for them. But uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. Uh, first, though, we're going to see Alliance taking on Poseidon. Uh, we're going to have their 10th game of the season. And uh, Poseidon, of course, formerly known as, or at least the uh, ex Virtus Pro people. We're going to see them up against Alliance in the next game of Star Ladder Star Series. So stick around. We'll be back with another game of Dota 2 and Star Ladder. <laughs> 